to another episode here on my channel. My name is Chaos Mall, and today we are not really talking directly about gaming, but we are talking about Intel's new dedicated GPU, which is called Arc. Yep, that's the name of Intel's new GPU dedicated for gamers and enthusiasts, which will be a direct competitor to AMD and Nvidia. How will it work? What can it do? I don't know. But I'm curious about this. Um, they have been, oh God, they have been working on this for, I think, over a decade now. They had like multiple dedicated GPUs for PCs and they never really followed through. Like they apparently had multiple prototypes. They scrapped the prototypes and they focused more on um, the mobile segment. So yeah, it was always... It was always a little bit of a lost cause here. And by the way, quick warning before we are going deeper into this, I'm also watching this live on stream with my community. So if I'm answering some questions in chat or it looks like I'm talking to a person, that's because I'm streaming. Just to make this absolutely clear for the people who are watching this on YouTube and they are like, oh, who is he talking to? I'm not talking to myself. Not right now. So let's jump into this. I haven't really watched this yet. I'm curious actually what they have to show, if anything, and if this is anything to go by. So let's have a look. Let's see, what is this video? Probably super loud. Let's lower the sound a bit. Oh, this is like the... Okay. <laughs> kind of pixelated. Not a very hybrid rate. Lots of blue and purple. Makes sense, those are the colors for Intel Gaming on their gaming division. Now the story behind Interlock. Uh, let's see what this nice guy has to tell us, shall we? Hi, I'm Roger Hi. from Intel. I have some exciting Hi, news to share about our graphics program. Graphics and gaming go hand in hand. I am a gamer. So are my friends and so are most of my coworkers. Games merge bleeding edge technology and all aspects of the creative arts to empower us to be a part of amazing stories. There are nearly three billion gamers Hi, worldwide. In many ways, gaming is a common ground that unites us across wow, communities that's a heavy and chain. cultures. And what Damn. I love about the gaming community is how it relentlessly pushes the computational limits of hardware and software, especially graphics. Gamers are also creators. Almost 1 billion hours hey, of Patrick. game content was published by gamers to YouTube, Twitch, or Facebook last year. And gamers watched almost 28 billion hours, Trouble. or 3 million years of game content in that same time. At Intel, we've hit notable graphics Hi, performance milestones in the last me few years. We quadrupled Shit. the performance of our integrated graphics, we introduced our first entry discrete graphics product along with DeepLink multi-XPU platform acceleration. It's no secret that we're building a roadmap hey, of high-performance <laughs> graphics architectures. Over the I'm just doing weeks it and now months, for the sake we'll of hear it. a lot about our discrete graphics solution based on these architectures. But today, we're announcing our first high-performance graphics brand for this solution. We're now ready to take it Hi, to Martin. the next level. As gamers, we expect more. But as Intel, we want to deliver more. Buttery smooth frame rates. Okay, too many people. Light notebooks. I'm, I'm sorry, Gilbert. High performance desktop I cannot PCs. Read everyone here. Simultaneous, no compromise. Gaming, streaming, and multitasking. Games that not only look real, but act real by exploiting exponential advances in AI hardware. Immediate access to the games we want to play when we want to play them. Our vision is to bring frictionless gaming to 3 billion gamers and we are unleashing all of our assets to get there. 
CPUs, XPUs, memory, interconnect, and software. Our commitment to this vision is writing a new story for Intel. We all have a story to tell. A story has a structure with plot and character inflections. Every game, gamer, and creator has a story, and every story has an arc. Inspired by this, I would like to introduce our new consumer discrete graphics brand, Intel Arc. Hmm. Okay, it Arc really... will span multiple generations, it and much each it. product generation has its own code name. So our upcoming hardware product that used to be called DG2 is now codenamed Alchemist. The following generations okay. will be Battle Mage, Celestial, and Druid. We can't wait to get these products into your hands. You should expect Alchemist-based products in Q1 2022. Oh, that's Until not too then, far away. Here's a sneak peek of our pre-production products in action. Thank you for watching. All right. Oh, they have an upscaler. So they're basically using all the new features of DirectX 12 Ultimate. Oh, they even show some games. Let's have a look at that, shall we? Oh, let's make this a little bit lower though, because I am pretty sure that will be quite loud. Let's have a look, shall we? I'm really curious about Metro Exodus. Rift Breaker. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Days gone. Okay. Ah, oh, man. I would love to go back to Chivalry 2. Vices. Ah, oh, that was it? No, not, not quite. What is this? This looks pretty. What is this? Looks a bit like Doom? I don't know what this is. I assume this is just to show graphics. Huh. I don't know what that was. That looked actually neat. Interesting. Multiform factors, Intel Arc graphics product built on gaming first codename Alchemist will be available in desktops and notebooks from global partners in Q2022. And then stay updated and stuff. Okay. So this is rather interesting. First things first, I'm actually happy that Intel is pulling through with this now. I think this is very important to note because even though I am not 100% confident right now what Intel will de deliver, it is still a point of having more options. Like, let's be real here. As a gamer for decades now, and who has always built his own PCs and has bought new GPUs and CPUs, we are kind of screwed when it comes to the hardware market. We have Intel and AMD and CPUs, and we have NVIDIA and AMD in the GPU segment. And you notice that every time. NVIDIA is asking far too much money. And the moment AMD has the better product, it's AMD who is asking more money. Right. I know that doesn't really happen too often when it comes to GPUs. Like A NVIDIA has been... The dominant factor for years now. Uh, this is why, why I use an NVIDIA card right now, right? But we, we saw it with CPUs. Like Intel was the dominating factor 
for decades or for at least a decade. And only thanks to Ryzen, AMD was finally able to crawl their way back and now has on par products or even way better products, depending on what you're looking for. That's the reality right now. And immediately there was the case. AMD was like, <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about pricing here. Like one of the best examples was they raised the price, but they also removed the coolers on the CPU. Like all the Ryzen up till like the first, second and third one, like the 1000, 2000 and 3000 series, they all came with a cooler, a really good one. Like the, the coolers AMD has or had were really, really good. So you didn't really need a new cooler for those CPUs. With the 5000 series, they were like, uh, coolers, uh, yeah, cool, cool, you can buy one. It's like, oh, come on, come on. Like, you, you see the problem. Like, the moment where you just have a two-party system one of the parties is coming out ahead. We consumers are getting screwed. Big time. And the same goes for GPUs, right? When you were looking just at NVIDIA, how they have been pushing the prices for their GPUs over years. And AMD is, of course, following suit. And now, especially this generation, <sighs> Like you saw the price tags. I know this is not just because of somebody is ahead or something. Like I know there is a shortage, and but there are more issues to this. And so, having another GPU manufacturer entering the fray, we might actually have a good shot that the prices will go down and that we at least have some competition. Now, of course, it comes really down to what can Arc deliver. Like, keep in mind, when we are talking about PC gaming, it's not just games which are coming out or which came out five years ago. When you're doing PC gaming, people are playing games which are 10, 20 years old. So I really, really hope that Arc and the software they're using can manage all of this. And more importantly, I really hope that when new games are coming out, Developers are already doing a lot of work to make the games run better on AMD and NVIDIA cards. This is why we are also getting um, hardware drivers from NVIDIA and AMD like the day a new game is releasing because they're like, hey, we made some. <laughs> like we did raise the percentage of FPS you can get. We made some rearrangements and so on and so forth. And I really hope that Intel can keep up with this. Like. I'm not expecting that Intel will deliver the same performance as Nvidia does day one. I assume they will be more on the performance side of AMD. And don't get me wrong, AMD is on a good path here. Like the RDNA 2 cards, they got really, really close to Nvidia now. So they're on a good track. But. Arc has to be at least on a similar level. And unfortunately, we can't, we can't say what it is. Like, yeah, they show that the uh, game sizzle reel. <laughs> and but that, doesn't, that doesn't mean much. Like, they have apparently some 4K upscaling. I assume they're using maybe Fidelity FX. From AMD, maybe they have their own thing going. I don't know. We have to see. But from a personal perspective, this is good. This is good and needed. Now it really depends on how long it will take that they are on par with NVIDIA or AMD. Or maybe they even start with making those companies run for their money. 
We will have to see. But it also seems like they are committed. Like they have talked about at least what? Four generations? Like the first one is Alchemist. Then we have like the last one is Druid and they Battle Mage was the second one and the third one. I forget what the third one was. So at least it seems like for the next four years or something they have a commitment. Which is good. Like the the worst thing would be, just think about it. The worst thing would be you're buying an Intel GPU for uh, 700 bucks. You, you're running one of the more top of the line graphic cards. And after two years, Intel is like, nah, this did cost us too much. We are out. That means you have dead hardware in your GPU, uh, in your in your PC, in your PC case. Because the moment they decide that they are stopping to produce those GPUs, I can guarantee to you that they are also stopping to release um, new hardware drivers and that they are basically stopping their support for the already existing GPUs. That would be the worst case scenario. And I hope that will never happen. So, yeah. It's, uh, on the one on the one hand, I'm really, really excited about this. Like I'm really hoping this is it. That Intel is finally entering the fray and we as consumers have more options. And let's be honest here, I'm always interested in more tech. <laughs> like it's more tech. Like, come on. But I'm also a little bit worried. And of course, and this is something uh, one of my viewers said in the chat, is it comes down to availability. Let's be real here. It's not just AMD or Nvidia who are struggling with manufacturing more cards to good prices. It's the whole industry which is struggling right now. And it would be kind of crazy when Intel actually manages to just have enough cards. That would be such a massive blow. And keep in mind, I don't know if Intel is actually producing their own GPU chiplets. That I do not know. I know that they are doing it for CPUs for decades now, um, which also led to some issues. But I wonder if they are doing the same thing with their GPUs and if they have the capacities to do so, that could be a major blow to AMD and Nvidia. So we have to see. We have to see. And I'm looking forward to it. And I will definitely keep it posted. Whenever we are getting more information, maybe we are getting a presentation at some point or we will get some, some hardware reports on people who are actually doing the full testing, right? Um, I will not because I'm not that in depth when it comes to like hardware specs and all that. Like I know my way around them I'm basically an enthusiast, but I'm, I'm certainly not doing that for a living. So I'm really curious to hear from the people who will have the pleasure to check out the hardware and give us actual specs. So with that said, uh, we are done for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you are on your way out, clicking on the like button. If you didn't like this video for whatever reason well the dislike button is right next there 
And if you're new to the channel, you want to see more reaction videos, more thoughts videos, more gaming news videos, and well, also games, then you came to the right place. And I would appreciate if you might consider to subscribe to the channel. With that said, thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and see you next time. Bye-bye.